Welcome grade 8 students and lesson 2, Physical Education. I would like you to prepare a whole size of paper and answer the questions which can be found or can be heard in this entire video. Ready? You can pause and play this video so you can answer to some questions written or can be found in the slides. First question is, have you seen an ancient film about king ruling his kingdom? Can you tell a title or of a movie or an anime or series about the king ruling his kingdom? Do you have an idea about the battles he and his kingdom engage in? If your answer is yes, then explain. If your answer is no, then explain it as well. What sport which can be incorporated a scenario about the king being protected from the enemy? Ideas from those battles were incorporated in several games, one of which was the game Chess. Our topic this afternoon or this day is about Chess, an analytical form of recreation. As a grade 8 student, you are expected to describe and explain the game chess using a mind map. Two, interpret the rules of the game and relate it to the real life situations. And last, manage a mini tournament based on a player's classification of skill in playing a chess. Chess is a mind stretching recreational activity. It is very popular indoor game. It increases the capacity of the participant to a deep analysis. It also promotes relaxation at the same time. Chess also improves the participant's memory, which he or she can use in making a real-life decisions as to what and where to move, or how it goes, or are you going to get a cut? Were you able to get a pieces? How are you going to win this particular game? So these are the things that could make you feel that you have to choose or you have to decide properly in order to win the game. Is there a time wherein you engage yourself deciding on the certain things which doesn't compromise the others? If so, can you write it how it goes? And what is the result of your decisions? You can pause this. Think it could be based being a student, it could be being a daughter or, or a son, a situation wherein you need to decide or you need to comprehend it properly. You need to think it wisely before jumping up into a conclusion. In the game chess, it is just like what we are into, a real life situation. Now, I would like you to describe the chessboard. How does it look like?
how many square all in all in a chessboard? Can you count? How many players who will play the chess? How many chess pieces for each player? Well, all those answers that you have written in your paper are what we call the nature of the game chess. What is the nature of the game chess? It is a strategic board game for two players using a checkered board, having a precise rules using 16 pieces of a game armies. What is the objective of the game chess? Its objective is to put the opponent's king under check from which it is impossible to escape. So it's just like in a game, or it's just like in a kingdom, the king must be protected by any means. So he has this what we call soldiers, chariots, infantry, protecting the king from any dangers or harm. So if you are the conqueror of that particular country or that particular kingdom, you need to defeat that particular king. Let us trace the history of the chess. It started in the country India. Remember, we also discussed about Indian music and art. This is now where we connect our story. It traces the history found in the earliest surviving evidence of chess dated 500 CE. India's first name of the chess is Chauturanga, which refers to the four division of army, such as elephants, cavalry, infantry, and chariot. You can pause this and answer this question. What is the Indian's first name of the game chess? The answer to that question is Chauturanga. You got it right. Division of army, such as elephants, cavalry, infantry, and chariot. The chivalry, who always rode in a horse, the infantry, or those who are using a sword, bow, and arrow, and the chariot, a two-wheeled horse-drawn vehicle used in ancient warfare and racing. Next to India, Persia. Played around 600 CE and name it the Shatranj. It is where the name King Shah and a checkmate Shemat was derived from. Next to Persia is Europe. In the 9th century, it quickly became popular in the Western Europe and spread throughout the continent in 1000 CE. Little mod modification of rules was made in the Southern Europe in 1200 CE. In 1945, they made major changes, making the queen the most powerful chess piece, which can be moved in any directions. So take note of that. Again, why does the queen become the powerful among all the chess pieces? Answer that question. Other developments for the chess. 
Chess soon moved from Europe to France in the 16th century and was played mostly in the coffee shops. In the 19th century, the chess organization was developed and the first chess tournament was held in London in 1851, wherein the first champion of that particular tournament was Adolf Anderson. Adolf Anderson is a German chess master. He won the great international tournaments of the year 1851 and 1862. Another player, Zachary Thort, was defeated by Emmanuel Laxer and held the title of 27 long years. In 1924, World Chess Federation was founded in Paris. FIDE or Federation Internationale des Etches became the official world organization of chess. FIDE is considered or acts as the governing body of the international chess competition. What are the different chess pieces and where it is being played or where it is played? The chessboard is an equipment where the game is played. It is composed of 64 equal squares alternately placed on the face of the board. The light-colored square is the white square and the dark-colored square is the black square. Chessboard is placed between two or the board is placed between two opposing players in which a way that the near corner of the right of both players in white. The vertical rows of the squares are called the files, and the eight horizontal rows of the squares are called the rungs. Now you can pause and answer these questions. In the chessboard, the vertical Numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What do you call that one? The correct answer to that is files. You can check your work if you got it right. And how about horizontal from A to H? You got it right. That is called rungs. That is where the chess pieces were aligned or placed according to its rank. So vertically, remember, that is what we call files. And horizontally, that is what we call ranks. If you are going to describe the movement of each chess pieces, you are going to identify what vertical number he is moving and what horizontal letter he is also moving or the rank of that particular chess pieces. There are 16 chess game pieces. 16 light colored pieces for a white and 16 dark colored pieces for the black. Now let's go over with what we call the chess game pieces. Remember, there are two players playing in that particular game. So one game could be consist of two players. One player would have one white king, one queen, two white rooks, two white knights, two white bishops, and eight white pawns. For player two, one black king, one black queen, two black rooks, two black knights, two black bishops, and eight black pawns. All in all, how many number of chess pieces? So that is how it being arranged. 
starting from the right to left from the rank. So you are going to see the rook is being placed both end, followed by the knight, bishop, and then we have the king and queen. And in front of those are the pawns, the eight pawns. Now there are what we call the chess bees and their corresponding moves. Take a look closely the feature of a king. Now the king. The king moves to any adjoining squares that are not under attack by an opponent. It can only move two or three squares when castly. So if we're going to count from green left, that's A, white B, C, D, E. The king plays at the rank E. He can move either forward, diagonally, right or left, or either at the sides, both either right or left side, rank. But remember, if there is no adjoining or there is no blocking chess piece. Next, the queen. The queen can move on any square, diagonal, rank, which is horizontal, file, vertical, except when there is a piece blocking the way going to the desired position. Remember that. Take note, remember that the queen is the most powerful among all the chess pieces. Now considering this, when you are going to place the queen to its place, it could be placed D rank. The arrows there are the desired or the positions or the directions that she can move. Either diagonally, vertically, or file, or horizontally, or rank. As long as there is no other chess pieces blocking on its way. Next, we have the rook. The rook can move in any square in the rank and in file, except when a piece is blocking the way going to the desired position. Remember, when we say file, it's vertical. When we say rank, it's horizontal. So that is an example of how the rook will move. Rooks are placed in file 1, ranks A and H. Next, we have the bishop. The bishop moves to any square on a diagonal perspective in which it stands except when a piece is blocking its way. Remember guys, that... There has to be someone, or when you are going to move that way, there's nobody blocks your way, or else you cannot move farther. Okay, that is an example of the bishop. So at the rank, the bishop stands in letter C and F, since there are two bishops um, in every player, for every player. Now, again, the, the bishop can move diagonally. So, I look at here at the letter C, which is placed at the green side. It moves diagonally. So, either a diagonal right or diagonal left. It can move all the way to that other side, to the top, at the file, file 6. Again, as long as there is no other piece, blocking its way while here letter f bishop f he can move to file 3 h3 all the way to a6 so that's how we also count you can count the squares remember the counting of the squares from let's have the files 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And for the rung from your left, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So when you count it, that's how we're going to identify the move or describe the move. Now I would like you to answer this question. Based on the file and the rung position, can we identify the position of the bishops based on the rank and file. Next, we have the knight. Knight, its move is composed of two different steps. First, it takes one step along its rank and then still moving away from the square of departure. One step to one single square diagonal, or in other words, as simple as L move. So look at closely to this illustration. Now let's have the first from the left. Let's play it again. Remember that the knight in the rank. It stays in letter B and on letter G. Again, the knight stands or plays at the first game of before its opening. You're going to place that in letter B and on letter G. Then, as you can see here, the letter B, it takes one step along its rank and still moving away from the square of departure. Or simply one step to one single square diagonal, forming an L move. From the point reference of B1, the movement of the horse or the knight, it's now in C3. Or you can have here in letter G, it moves also going to letter H3. Then it can also move. From H3, could also move to F4. And then it also goes all the way top 2, goes to file 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 6. Let's count what letter A, B, C, D, E. So 6. Um, a, B, C, D, E. So that's E6. That's how it moves. So just remember an L formation or L move. It's for the night. I would like you to write your thoughts about this illustration. And then the color of the block night has a red dots. And then this uh, white knight is a yellow green dot. Now, if you're going to upload an app, chess app, the good thing there is when you click a certain piece, just like there in the night, it also gives you an idea, a particular move or guide as a move. Where as you going? Where are you going to move? You will decide. Especially if you're going to to click that particular either in a rank or in the file or diagonally. Now, you just have to think of it that if I'm going to move that way, you need to analyze whether you will be captured or you will be caught by the opponent. So with that black knight, as you can see that the first, the red marks there. Those are the letter L movement. So from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's a file 5. A, B, C, D, that's D. So 5D. 5D. From there, you can move all the way top to 7 file. 7C, either in 7C or 7E. Or you can also move either to 
B B6 or F6 or you can go down to that's 4B or B4 or lower can also move either to B, uh, C3 or you can also move one to, that's E3 or another movement could be F4. So those are the guides for your L move. What have you noticed with the red and green? Two of the which have the same spot. So if the black will move that part, so he will be captured by the white. Or this white will move to that part, then the black knight will capture the white knight. Let me see if you have the same thoughts that tell you. Okay, just put it on, write it on. And the last is the pawn. The pawn moves only one step forward, except for the first move if the player decides to move two adjacent squares forward. So remember that. So consider these two pawns. So either you can have two forward or just one forward. But technically, if you're gonna capture a piece, it must be diagonal. Again, let's play it again. Once you move it again, in the first, remember the pawns are placed in the rungs in two file number two file okay and it goes forward it could be two forward it could be that is your opening whether you want to move two steps forward or one step forward it depends on your decision now i need you to write your thoughts about this illustration i'll give you about one minute The eight pawns are placed in front of all the rank chess pieces. Protecting the king, the queen, the knight, the bishop, and the rook. Now, can you tell a certain situation wherein you sacrifice yourself just to protect your loved ones or someone else? Or can you relate this to a real life situation? Can you share something? Can you think of a situation? What would that be? Now I need you to describe the movement of the following chess pieces. Let's have the king, queen, rook, bishop, Knight and pawn. Okay, good luck. Moving on, what are the rules of the game? White always starts the game by moving peas, followed by a block of the same procedure. This will continue until the game is ended by a checkmate. Resignation or a flag down clock. Personally, I always wanted to have or to use the white one because it's some kind of advantage of being or to move first for the opening. Now, if you have a chessboard at home, try to arrange the chess piece according to their rank. Always remember the pawns are placed in front. 
followed by the by the different chess pieces such as the rooks, followed by the knight, followed by the bishop. Then you have the queen on letter D and letter E for the king. Next, when a player threatens the king on his move by putting a game piece in front or aligned to its position without a cover or anything blocking its way, it is called check. You as a player, you have to say check. The black queen checks the white king since it is diagonally directed to its way. So this queen could capture this king. So she should say checked. Just like that. What are the rules of the game? If the king is under check, a player must take an action of moving it to the adjoining square away from the check. If the king has no room to get out of the check, no matter what he does, it is called checkmate. Now, pause this video, then write something. Or answer the question. Describe the situation and how it is called as a checkmate. Analyze the pieces and the movement of the king. Analyze the situation and how it is called a checkmate. Look closely the different chess pieces that surrounds the king. The movement is there any way out? No matter where he will move or the king will move. As you can see, the bishops in line with the diagonally, bishops call it as a check. Now, if the king will move downward, this white, let rank four, D at the file one, D1, still he will be captured by the queen. Either the king will move forward. Letter D3 still, he will be checked by the queen. And if he will not move either, this is already a check because um, this is an L for the knight. Moving letter L diagonally from the position of the king to P1. And then okay, there's no way out. So this is already a checkmate no matter where he will go. There are three ways of getting out of a check. First, move the king to the square where it is out of the checking piece alignment. So let's see you in this situation. Now can you see if you are going to decide where should the king go? Or where should the king will move? The king was checked. If you are going to move the king, where will it be? and why now if you're gonna move so there you go you can move an l position so with that green illustration the king will be captured so either or he will move this way either to move to the right or that green so that he will not be captured by the queen nor to the knight nor to the bishop that is how we're going to do. Move the king wherein he is safe or not being aligned to other chess pieces. Next, capture the checking piece. If there is a piece that, be, that says checked or you're being checked by that piece, especially if he is somewhat closer to you, closer to the king, then capture it just like this in example. Now, when the black knight move closer to the closer, oh, it's not a checking piece, but you can have that as 
you can capture the night since that night is closer to you. But if ever there would be a checking piece another here, you can get it. Any any piece which is closer to you can capture it. Other ways in getting out of check is to capture the checking piece. As you can see in this illustration, the rook which is in the b2 checked the king which is in the c2. Since the rook can move files or rank, this checking piece could be captured by our king since the king can move in one forward diagonal vertical diagonal or in a rank file diagonal or rank the next is to place another chess piece between the checking piece and the king so in this illustration you have the bishop the pawn and the king where in the bishop checked the king so next what we need to move is this pawn one step forward in order to block the check next is what we call the castling castling is a move where the king and rook change positions and occupy the adjacent area between them in this area you can exchange the rook moving to the side or moving to the place of the king and while also the king will move to the side of the rook in letter H, H1. Next illustration, it was being interchanged. And that is what we call castling. However, there are what we call rules in castling. One of which, the king and the rook are in their official positions and no move has been done either of the two. The position of the king is in the letter E, while the position of the rook is in letter H. None of them move previously, so they can do the castling. The second rule is that the square between the two are not occupied. That means the bishop and the knight has already been moved out of the way third stalemate or draw is a term used in a chess describing a player's king that has no room to move in any adjoining squares but not under opponents checked when do we consider the game is draw one Draw by the consent both players. Two, there is a draw due to insufficient chess piece or force. Third, draw by 50 move law. So when we say 50 move a law, move rule it in the states is that a player can claim or draw of no capture has been made and no pawn has been moved. In the last 50 moves, for the purpose a move, for this purpose, a move consists of a player completing a turn, followed by opponent completing a turn. A draw by repetition. So the move has been repeated all over again. There is no way out. And the last is a draw by perpetual check. A perpetual check in the game chess is a situation in which one player can force a draw by an ending series of checks. This typically arises when the player who is checking cannot deliver checkmate and failing to continue. The series of check gives the opponent at least a chance to win. Most likely there are about five draw um, checks has been made repeatedly so there is no way out there is no way so a draw could happen
Welcome to Chess Chatter. In this video, we'll look at an example of perpetual check by Howard Staunton from his Chess Player's Handbook published in 1864. Staunton instructs the reader to set up the board in this position. Notice that black has the advantage in material, but the situation will allow white to draw the game. To do this, white must play the queen to a square that will put the black king in check, either to king 4, queen 5, or queen bishop 6. After moving to king 4, the black king has no option. It must interpose its queen at queen knight 2. If I were to take the queen, I would lose the game on account of black's two pawns. Instead, I need to play the queen to king 8, giving check. Here, black can only block with its queen, and I can repeat the check at king 4. Notice that I can keep giving these same two checks forever. Because of this, the game is resigned as drawn by perpetual check. If you like this example of perpetual check, please click the thumbs up, and to see more chess videos, visit Chess Chatter on YouTube. There are numerical and comparative value for each chess piece. Queen is equivalent to 9. Queen has the 9 points, which is equivalent to 9 pawns. Rook consists of 5 points, which is equivalent to 5 pawns. Bishop and Knight is 3 and a half which is equivalent to 3 pawns, while pawn is 1, which is equivalent to 1 pawn. So you have to think closely and you have to think wisely that when you are going to capture a piece, it has to have a bigger numerical value. Because when you are going to capture, if your queen is being captured by a pawn, you have already lost and nine pawns there is sometimes the queen was being defeated by a merely pawn or, or vice versa do not underestimate the power of the pawn so it's a matter of think wisely once you have done listening or studying the lesson I need you to answer the following questions. You can write it down to your notebook or to your paper. Do you like playing chess? If yes, why? If no, why? Did you learn the rules of the chess? Yes or no? Compare chess with the real life problems. I know all of us have a lot of problems. You can state one. And last but not the least, what are the physical and health benefits of playing chess? And now for our application, practice playing chess with your family member using a chess board. If you don't have, you can download a chess-free app in a Play Store. Once you are doing it, once you are already familiarized the rules and regulations and able, you are somewhat confident enough, take a short video clip while playing a chess. Record your opening. When we say opening, your first move and the most crucial part of the game. I hope you enjoy while playing it. And remember, you may learn much more from a game. You lose than from a game you win. You will have to lose hundreds of games before becoming a good player. By Jose Raul Capablanca. That's all for today. I hope you learned something. And thank you for watching. See you next time. It's me, Rose Jane, your teacher. Goodbye, everyone. Take care.